Okay, we're going to have a look at what's called combustion analysis. This is uh, this is sort of like the hydrate lab in that uh, we're going to use some actual lab data um, to determine the formula of a compound. So we're going to say one gram sample of a compound containing only carbon and hydrogen was analyzed by combustion analysis. The com complete combustion produced 0.6919 grams of carb or sorry of water and 3.338 grams of carbon dioxide. Determine the empirical formula. So this is complete combustion, and our unknown compound we're just going to call CXHY. All of the carbon from our unknown compound we know goes to carbon dioxide, and all of the hydrogen goes to water. We're not going to worry about the oxygen, because the oxygen's in both products. Okay, but we're going to use this notion of where the carbon goes and where the oxygen goes to determine the formula of the compound. So we know that, for example, 3.338 uh, grams of carbon dioxide uh, was formed when this one gram sample of the unknown was uh, was burned. So if we determine the percent composition of carbon dioxide, I'm specifically going to look for carbon. The percent composition of carbon dioxide, or sorry, carbon in carbon dioxide is 27.3%. Okay, I do this the same way that I would have done a percent composition problem for any other uh, any other compound. I'm going to look at now the percentage of hydrogen in water. Okay, so the mass of hydrogen is two point of two hydrogens is 2.02 .02 divided by the mass of water times 100. I come away with 11.2 percent. All right, so there's 11.2 percent of uh, water is hydrogen. So now I'm going to go back to carbon dioxide and I'm going to say, all right, what is the mass of that 27.3%? All right, so of the 3.338 grams of carbon dioxide, 0 0.9911 grams uh, was carbon. All right, so now remember, all of this carbon came from the original compound. All right, I'm going to do the same thing now for water. I'm going to say the uh, 0.6919 grams of water. And I want to know what 11.2% of that was. So 0 0.0775 grams. Okay. Keeping a few more, uh, a few more decimal places, all right, is always going to be uh, beneficial in these types of scenarios. Okay, so now remember, all of this hydrogen came from the original compound. Okay, so I'm going to now finish, I'm going to now treat this as an empirical formula question. Remember the rhyme, percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small and multiply till whole. Well, I did my percentages, all right, or I, sorry, I used my percentages and I got masses. So this is the actual mass of carbon, so I'm going to convert uh, mass to moles. I'm going to get moles of carbon, then I'm going to get moles of hydrogen. You divide by the smallest number. All right, multiply if necessary until whole. All right, so 0 0.0758 moles of carbon. I'm going to convert this to, I'm going to convert hydrogen to moles as well now. 0 0.0767 moles. Okay, these are, you can probably see right away, these are about the same value. So when I divide them each by 0 0.0758, I'm essentially going to get 1. All right.
and we'll divide this. All right. And we're just going to say this is approximately 1. Okay. So I, there is no need for a multiply till whole step because they're both already empirical form. They're both already whole numbers. So the empirical formula is CH. Now I'm going to add a part B to this question. So the empirical formula, that was the answer to the original question. Now I'm going to add in, I'm going to say if 0 0.25 moles of the compound has a mass of 19.53 grams, what is the molecular formula? So remember, the molar mass is grams per mole. Okay, notice that in this part B, if you will, of the question, I've given you a mole value and a grams value. So if I divide grams by moles, this will give me the standardized unit of molar mass. So 19.53 grams divided by 0.25 moles, this is equal to 78.12 grams per mole. So now, remember, a molecular formula question. Take the mass of the real compound, all right, so in this case the molar mass, 78.12, and divide by the mass of the empirical formula. If they're the same, then the empirical formula is the molecular formula. If they're not the same, it gives you that factor to multiply the, uh, the empirical formula by to get the molecular formula. So 78.12, we're going to divide that by 13.02, because that's the mass of CH. Right, I'm going to get 6. This tells me that I need to multiply CH by 6 in order to get the molecular formula. So the molecular formula isn't going to be CH, it's going to be C6H6.